So basically, the consensus is we're all hungry. Yeah. We right should out. just have lunch early. <laughs> All right, we're on page six. I'm only going to do these four problems, and I think there are four problems that match it on your assignment. Okay, that's really all we're going to do today. All right, so up here, we were just looking at simplifying. Down here, we're going to simplify each uh, <coughs> polynomial. Then we'll see what can cancel before we have to multiply. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes, no? Okay. All right, so up here we've got to factor this. So x squared splits to x and x. All right, negative 24. I need different signs that multiply to 24. So what is that? That would give me 10. It's going to be 12 and 2. Does everybody understand why it's 12 and 2? I mean, there's more than one thing that multiplies to 24. But the only combination that's going to give me negative 10 is 12 and 2. This, remember, this negative sign back here tells me the signs are different, right? This negative sign says, gives me the sign of the bigger number. That's how that rule works. So, yeah, 6 and 4 give me 10, but the signs wouldn't work. Does that make sense? You have to be really careful with that. So, x minus 12 and x plus 2 in whichever order you wrote them, I don't care. Where is it relevant? All right, down here on the bottom. What can we do here? Factor out x squared. Yeah, this is a GCF. So if I factor out an x squared, that leaves me with x plus 2, which cancels with that. I'm going to go ahead and cancel it right there. Is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right, so now I've got to come over here and look at this one. It's a binomial. So I've got to look for GCF first, then see if there or if there's something special. Which of those is what I'm doing? GCF. It's a GCF. So the GCF here is what? 5x. 5x. So I pull out 5x, and that leaves me with x minus 4. Okay, now I'm coming down here to the bottom. Now my hope is that there's either an x minus 4 or an x minus 12 in this problem? It's going to be 12. Okay. Oh. It's actually, in this particular oh, yeah. problem, it's both of them, yeah. which is really nice. Okay. So it is x minus 4 <coughs> and x minus 12. 12 times 4, negative 4 times negative 12 gives me a positive 48. Negative 4 plus negative 12 gives me the negative 16. So it's perfect. So this cancels with this, right? And x minus 12 cancels with x minus 12. So all of that stuff went away. So now I have 5x over x squared. What can I do there? An x. Yeah, this x and that square basically cancel each other, right? Everybody okay with that one? Yes. And so what I'm left with is 5 over x. So even though we had this huge complex um, <coughs> expression up here, all this is all that I would end up with. Everybody okay with that? All right, y'all remember doing this last year? Like we we did it a little bit, we but not a ton. I remember. Okay. Did you say you don't remember all this stuff? I said I remember. You do remember. I mean, it was I think it was towards the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I I'm gonna look at these. And when I was doing this with y'all last year, a lot of times I would. Okay. Um, I would I a lot of times. I try to see which one is easiest to factor first because then I can try to match some stuff up because ultimately that's what we're trying to do, right? Because we're trying to match factors that I can force to cancel. So that doesn't look real fun, although I can tell by looking at it how it's going to factor. Um, so where do y'all, I probably would start with this second one over here because it's a little easier. Is, are y'all okay with that? Are y'all okay if I write this one first or do you want me to leave space and write it over here so you don't get thrown off? Does it matter to y'all? No. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just draw your fraction bar here and draw a fraction bar here, and then however you, wherever you want to write it is fine. Uh, all right, I'm going to look over here first because it's a binomial, and a binomial is generally easier to factor, so I'm going to factor them first. On top, what can I do there? Take 3P out. I can take out 3P. So if I take out 3P, that leaves me with what? 
D minus 5. All right, so it takes care of that one. All right, this one, what do you see here? It's a difference of squares, so it looks like what? 6 minus P and 6 plus P. Is everybody okay with that? All right, so what I'm hoping is that this one down here has a P minus 5 in it. Is that logical to y'all? Okay, here's what I know about this one down here. I know that 5 is prime, which means one of them has to be P and the other one has to be 5P. Does everybody <coughs> agree with that? Y'all understand that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so back here at the back, I have also a 5, which is also prime. Where would I like for that 5 to go? I really would like for it to, I'm going to write it in dark, I'm going to write it real light. Right? I'd like for this to be P minus 5 if it works, right? If it doesn't work, I'm going to have to erase that back out. But I want to see if I can make that work. All right. If this is 5, then that forces this to be what? If this is 5, 5 divided by 5 is, so it forces this to be a 1, right? Then all i got to do is look at the signs and see if I can make that work. So this is a positive 5, which means what about the signs? They're a negative they're, They're the same, and I already put a minus here, so I have to put a minus here. All right, now I need to check and see if that will give me what I need in the middle, right? Okay, so negative 5 times 5 gives me negative 25, and a negative 1 times P gives me negative 1P, negative 25, negative 1 gives me negative 26, right? So it did work. Did I have to really come up with all those factors on my own? No, because I forced it to fit. And most of the time with these types of problems, they're going to fit, okay? So that cancels with that. So I've already eliminated one thing. So now I'm looking at the top up here and I want some of this, right? Which, look at your numbers. Which do you think is probably there? Look at your leading coefficient. What is the leading coefficient here? Five. So which of these things do you think is probably there? Oh, 5P. Five 5P five minus 1. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, I don't know that for a fact, but I'm hoping that it is. Does that make sense? So I'm going to go ahead and write 5P minus 1. I'm just not going to write it in real dark in case I have to erase it. Does that make sense to y'all? Yeah. Okay, because a lot of these, like, yeah, could I, go, could I factor that in my head? Yes, I can. But y'all, like, it's easiest, and this is exactly how I taught you this last year, was to see what I can force to come out of there, and it'll, the other part will just come automatically. Does that make sense? It'll give it to you. Okay, if this is 5P, then this must be what? P. P, all right? If this is a 1, then, and I need it to be, to multiply to get me 6, what do I multiply 1 by to get 6? 6. So this needs to be 6. Now I've got to just figure out what the signs are. If this one's negative, what does this one have to be? Positive. Positive. All right, so now we're going to see if that works. 5P times P gives me 5P squared. Yes? yes. 5P times positive 6 gives me? 30. Positive 30P. Negative 1 times P gives me a negative 1P. And positive 30 and negative 1 does, in fact, give me 29, right? Yep. Negative 1 times positive 6 gives me negative 6. Yes? It works. Okay, so I'm going to kind of, I mean, you don't have to go back in and rewrite it darker, but I'm going to do that in case I have to make copies and it does better. Okay, so that's what I've got. All right, so 5P minus 1 and 5P minus 1, those cancel. All right, these are commutative, right? They don't look the same, but they mean this. They both have plus signs, so I don't have to worry about anything with that, right? Okay, so P plus 6, P plus 6. All right, so what is left on top? 3, 3, 3, 6, 6. 3P over 6 minus P. And you can put the bottom inside the parentheses or drop it off. It does not matter. It means the same thing. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right. These are division. What happens when you divide with a fraction? You have to flip, flip the second one. You have to flip the second one. So technically, I've got to flip these over at when I factor. Okay? So I'm going to kind of do the same process here. Here's my 2 lines. Hopefully I made that long enough. All right. I would start right down here at the bottom. Are y'all okay with that's where I'm going to start? Because that's what? It's a difference of squares. So it's going to be 1 plus 2s and 1 minus 
to S. And a lot of times when I see those that, I, when I see that where the, the number is first and the variable is at the, is at the back, I already try to get in my mind that this right up here is very likely a possibility. Does it mean it's always going to be there? No, but it's a good possibility. Does that make sense? Where we have to multiply times the negative to get to something to cancel. All right. Where I'm probably going to, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to come back to this one. Are you okay with me coming back to the top here? All right. Remember, this one right here, I have to write down here because I'm flipping it. All right. So 2S squared. The only way to factor 2s squared is 2s and s, right? Are we okay with that? All right, the only way to factor 1 is 1 and 1. Now all we got to do is figure out what the signs are. So my bigger number has to end up with what sign? A negative and 2 is that bigger number, right? And to this 2s gets multiplied times this one back here, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the one I need to be negative. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then that makes this one positive. So that gives me a positive 2s, I mean a negative 2s and a positive 1s, which in fact gives me negative 1s here. Yes? Yeah. Everybody okay with that? And positive 1 times negative 1 gives me the negative 1 up here. And 2s and s, 2s squared. Everybody okay with that one? All right, so I've got all the bottom factors. All right, now I'm going to come to this one because this one also is all primes and it's easy to deal with. Everybody okay with that? All right, only way to factor 2s squared is 2s and s. All right, and again, I have a 1 at the back, so it's still 1 and 1. All right, I need them combined to be how much? Negative. Negative 3, which means they have to what? They have to both be negative. One, this is positive, which tells me they have the same sign. This is negative, that tells me that sign is negative, right? Okay, so that takes care of that. 2s times s gives me 2s squared. Um, 2s, negative 2s and negative 1s gives me negative 3s, and negative 1 times negative 1 gives me a positive 1. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. All right, that and that already cancel. Everybody sees that okay, yes? All right, now these are, pro are most likely what's going to cancel, but I'm going to end up having to do a sign change. Everybody okay that we're probably going to end up with a sign change here? Yes? Okay. All right, so now I need to come back up here. I'm hoping one of, one of these two is this, is comes out of that. And I'm going to Can't you one. take out that 1 plus 2s and the 2s plus 1? Because they're... No, they're both on the bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't do that. I can only cancel one on the top and one on the bottom <coughs> together. All right, I know this is 2s for sure, right? And the other is one, is just S, sorry. All right, now I gotta figure out what to do with this four. So I need a nine. So what do you think I need to do with that four? Do I leave it or split it? Like I know what to do, so I need y'all to figure it out. four and one. Here's why it's four and one. I need a nine, right? Which means I need to multiply that four times the two to get eight, and then there's one more left. Does that make sense to everybody? I mean, yeah, you can trial and error it and, error it and do two and two, but two and two is only going to give you six. That's not enough. You know what I'm saying? Because two times two here would give you four, and the other two would only be six. It's not big enough. So, which means I need the four to be here to multiply it times this two here, so I can get eight. And then one more in the middle gives me nine. Does that make sense, everybody? Yep. Are we all following okay? Yep. All right, and, they're, and it's all positive here. All right, so S plus four is not canceling with anything. Two S plus one and two S plus one cancel. That's nice. All right, so the one I need to look at is this one right here and this one right here. I can cancel if I do what? Cancels. The negative. If I multiply basically the whole top times a negative one, right? Everybody okay with that? I look how I did that. Yeah. All right. So that means now this cancels and now this cancels. So on top, I have a negative one, right? And I have s plus four. And on the bottom, I have one plus two s. Everybody okay with that? So ultimately, I would probably write my answer as this. 
but if you left it like that, I would be okay with that too. It means the same thing. I would not distribute the one in. Just leave it on the outside of the parentheses. Is that what you're about to ask me, yes, Nathan? Yeah. If you do, it's okay, but I would just leave it on the outside. Like there's no need to distribute it in because ultimately we're simplifying and this is simplified. Like it's pulled, like because it's factored out, sort of. Does that make sense to y'all? We okay with this problem? Yes, Bethany. What if you would have wrote the negative sign like in the middle but not on the top? Would it still count the same? What do you mean if I wrote it in the middle? Like you put negative and then the brackets. Or is it only the top that's negative or is the whole thing? The whole thing's negative. Oh, you mean like if I wrote it out here? Yeah. That's okay too. Okay, because I think I did that on my other yeah. side. Most of the time I usually attach my negative to the top, but a lot of times it's written out front. It yeah. means the same exact thing. Okay. Anybody else have a question? We're good. Zach, you okay? I didn't teach you last year, so I don't know what you learned and didn't learn. Are you good? Okay. All right. Same process here. I'm going to go ahead and draw these. It just makes it a little bit easier, and then I can move around as needed. Okay. This is going to factor crazy. So, this already <coughs> is what? Uh, a different, are y'all okay if I write right up above it? Okay, this factors to be k squared plus 4 and k squared minus 4. Is everybody okay with that? That's perfect square though. Yes. Perfect square. Not yet. Oh, okay. okay, yeah. As Bethany just said, well, that's a difference of squares. So k squared plus 4, I can't do anything with, right? right. So I'm going to go, I, now I'm going to bring it down here, k squared plus 4. But this one becomes what, Bethany? K plus two and K minus two. K plus two and K minus two. I don't know. I like it when it ends up like that because it always ends up a bunch of stuff canceling. Yeah, lots of stuff is going to cancel. Like most of these should cancel relatively nicely. Okay. Now then, I'm looking at this. Remember, these flip because that's a division. So these are going to flip. So here's what I'm looking at. This thing right here has lots in common with this thing right here. Would you all agree? Yeah. Okay. So what can I pull out of here? 4K. Okay, if I write, if I pull out a 4K, that leaves you with K squared plus 4, right? Yeah. Okay, so that has to be written down here on the bottom. I was just checking to make sure something else wasn't going to come out of there. Okay, so now that cancels with that one, and I got rid of it. So all I have left down there is 4K. Is everybody all right with that? Yes. Sometimes I have to do something out to the side to make sure it's going to all right, what about this one right here? Can I pull something out of it? Six. 6K. So if I pull out 6K, that's going to leave me with 2K plus, three. Yeah, 2K plus 3, which we'll come back and do some canceling with this stuff in a minute. Okay, so I'm really hoping that this is what? Two. I'm going to hope it's 2K plus 3 or one of these two, right? Or both. That'd be even better. All right, so in this has to be 2K and K, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's no other option. So I'm hoping that this is plus three. I don't know for sure, but I'm hoping it is. If it's plus three, then it forces this to be what? Negative two. Okay, so let's see. That would be 2K times negative two would be a negative four and a positive three. Negative four and positive three gives me negative one in the middle. Yes? Yep. And positive 3 times negative 2 gives me negative 6. I it works. So I'm going to go ahead and darken it up so we can see it a little bit better. All right, we got it. <coughs> so 2K plus 3, 2K plus 3, K minus 2, K minus 2. So the only thing left on the bottom is what? 4K. And I know that these Ks right here are going to cancel, and this simplifies to what? 2K. Two. 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 3 over 2. two. So on top, I have 3K plus 2 all over 2. That's all that's left down there. And you do not have to distribute the 3 in there. It's, it's unnecessary. Everybody okay with that? All good? I do have one more question. Uh, yes. So I'm not getting it. Why can you not do the square root of K squared plus 4? And you can do it up the uh, because the, there is no such thing as a sum of squares. Oh, okay. There, it's a difference of squares. Now, cubes 
you do have a difference and a sum. But on squares, there is, there is no such thing as a sum of squares. So once you have k squared or something squared plus another perfect square, like you can't do anything if there's addition in the middle. Does that, does that make sense? Yes, like it just doesn't exist. Yes? So on the bottom of verse 1, why would it be 2k plus k instead of 2k minus 2? Where are we? On number 6. On okay. Number on this one? Uh, to the left. Here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 2k and k is how I get 2k squared, yes. right? All right. I was hoping this would be a 3. So if I do 3 times 2, that does give me 6. This one has to be positive and one of them has to be negative because that's a negative 6, right? Yes. Okay. Then this tells me of these two, the bigger one has to be negative. So, uh, but I need the bigger of the multiplication, not necessarily the bigger number here. Yeah, three is bigger than two, but when I multiply this two times this two, it gives me negative four. And I needed the bigger product to be negative. Does that make sense? Because if I foiled this back together, I would have a negative 4K and a positive 3K, which gives me the negative one here. Does that make sense? So I used to we're looking at just the number at the back, but if it's multiplied by a coefficient, I need the bigger product of the outside and inside to be negative. Does that answer your question? Yes. I completely understand why you would ask that. So anybody else have any questions on this? Okay, on your assignment, I think there are only four problems that go with this. That's all you're doing today.